First item is a hoodie from Jean-Michel Basquiat. All of his stuff is great sellers. Is great sellers. All his stuff are doobie great sellings. This is like a terry cloth thing, this crown you see a lot in conjunction with Basquiat. And it sold for 50 bucks. Really basic piece. It's a Polo Ralph Lauren not vintage polo shirt. I got it at the bins. So no risk essentially and sold for 14 bucks. Would not pick it up for six bucks at a Goodwill. This is a Buck Mason, which is one of my favorite brands. And it took a long time to sell. I'm not entirely sure why. It did sell for 18. Usually this is a bulletproof brand. I have no problem flipping these, but this just sat around for a while. Sometimes that happens. This is not an exact science. This was seven bucks at a Goodwill, which is pretty high for a t-shirt, but Kenzo Paris is a desired and a designer. I wanted to say designer, but both work. My mouth is working great today. Uh, 42 bucks. I got this without needing to look it up. It's a motocross jersey with padded elbows from Fox Racing. It sold for 25 bucks and it sold overnight. This is one of my favorite things to sell from this brand. And this is a brand that I advocate to death on this channel. I really like selling Fox. I would not pay a lot of money for it, but if you can find it at the bins, it's a fairly effortless flipper. A Burberry London suit that, as you can tell from the wood background, did take a while to sell. It flipped for 80 bucks. It's a little bit of a little bit of an older style, pleated pants with the cuffed ankles, and Nordstrom is a little bit lower end, and I think it had big lapels, relatively big lapels as well. Was it a three button? Yes, it was a three button. So three button jackets are a little bit out of vogue. The two buttons are much more popular. That's probably why this took so long to sell. Another Benz pickup, it's a Nike Pro pair of leggings. Nike Pro, including Nike Pro Combat, is not as strong of a seller as once it was, which is too bad because you do find it quite a bit. The demand has just fallen a little bit. I do love picking this kind of athletic clothing up at the Benz because typically it's pretty lightweight, or at least these were, and kind of the, the meshy, activewear shirts and sports bras, that kind of stuff are that heavy. And the demand is gonna be higher going into spring and summer. This was a vintage suit from Geeves and Hawks, which is a higher end men's clothing house in Seville Row. And definitely vintage, probably 90s, I would guess. And did take a little while to sell. Didn't sell for as much as I had hoped, 95 on Poshmark. I'm still happy with it. It had some kind of a stain on the front there. Again, look with the pleated front and the hemmed or the cuffed ankle openings on the pants. The cuffed cuffs, I think. Um, and it's what's called a double-breasted jacket. See the peak lapels, the two pointy peak lapels and the two sets of buttons. Those still sell. The demand is not as high as just standard two or even three button jackets, but people still do want these occasionally. A Viore tank I probably picked up for two or three dollars at a Goodwill. I don't remember exactly. It was a retail thrift. 30 bucks had some graphic on the front. I picked this vintage Frank shirt up because it was vintage, because it had metal buttons, and really because of the pattern. It's a denim look, although it was not denim, acid wash print, I guess, or dye job. That's the tag there, Frank. Frank is, not to my knowledge, a great brand, but just based on the aesthetics alone and the keywords that I knew I could infuse it with, I knew that it was probably a smart pickup. I did get this for seven bucks at a Goodwill. And it flipped within a month and a half, I think, which was pretty good. That kind of mottled coloration is acid wash. And that's really popular with younger people, people in their early 20s, teens. This finally sold. This is one of the oldest items in my store. I've probably had this thing for two and a half years or something. I actually just took it down off of my eBay because I didn't want to pay to keep re-upping the listing just because it wasn't selling. I have a few listings like that that just are in a plastic bag in the storeroom that are only on Poshmark because it costs nothing to upload and to re-upload and share on Poshmark. So it finally did sell. It's a a wrestler who used to be popular at least like five years ago or something. I guess her star kind of faded. Uh, wrestling tees, if you can find them vintage, tend to be the most desirable. But each wrestler has their own fan base. 
and their own level of popularity, and then shirts within the vertical of those wrestlers can be worth more or less. A Lululemon tank that I picked up at the bins, very lightweight, it costs nothing at all, and it had this tie-off waist thing. I thought this was an aftermarket detail, a DIY thing, and then I untied it and there was this this ribbon of fabric extending off the hem. So it was clearly meant to be tied that way. I had to retie it. And it sold real quick, 25 bucks. Didn't even have the size on it. When this happens, which happens a lot, I just give the dimensions, the measurements, and I kind of give an eyeball estimation. You, you guys okay? There was a little bit of an earthquake. These flipped, these were in the uh, instant gratification haul video. There was a pair of denim these that uh, did sell right away relatively right away. And these took longer to sell. They did flip 24 bucks soon after I published that video. One of the nice things about the bins is that they'll just throw stuff in there that has flaws with it, even if it's worth money. This is an example. It's a rare Lil Wayne shirt and it had holes in it and a stain on it. And I didn't bother with the stain because I just don't. And there are strong arguments to be made on either side. Like, do you want to take the time to put in the labor to wash it and put shout on it and don? I know I've heard all of the tricks. I know how to do it. I just don't bother anymore, especially because I have a coin operated laundry machine, washing machine, washer. I can dish the dishwasher. I have a servant who washes all of my clothing for me and I don't want to overburden them with more work. Their spines are already hunched and deformed and brittle from all of the laundry that I pile on top of them to handle. So I don't want to add to that. So I just sell as is and I've gotten away with it. Uh, I find that if you just point out the flaws and you price low, which I do anyway, it's just often not a big problem. A pair of Lucky Brand jeans that I got from the bins for no money, 21 bucks, out the door it went. We're on eBay now, this Xenia jacket. Look at those photos. Look at the quality, the craftsmanship. Look at how vivid the colors are. Wonder why this took so long to sell. It is, oh my God. Oof, oof, okay. Those are what's called surgeon's cuffs. Synonymous with surgeon's cuffs is working cuffs. That's where the buttons work. That means it's more expensive usually because they cost more to manufacture than just tacking them on. Those are called ornamental buttons. Made in Spain and cool effect. I don't remember if that's significant. I sourced this and listed this so long ago that the details are lost to the sands of time. Should have priced this down to move it quicker. It slipped through my cracks and 67 and a half bucks happy with that. I think that was on a 10% off offer. Got this one at the bins. Hylite is a decent brand. It used to be a great brand. Now it's just pretty good. It had a hole in it. And because I think it's an active wear shirt, somebody didn't care about the hole, still picked it up for 15. 15 is pretty low for a Hylite shirt. These I delisted and then sold similar and priced them down $5 and they flipped like that. These cargo shorts were in a haul video from like a month or two ago. These sold for 28 bucks. We're going into cargo short season. Duluth Trading Co., one of my favorite bread and butterers. Not a big surprise here. 28 bucks is pretty good for a used pair of cargo shorts. A Ferrari shirt for 13 and a half. This is a Benz find. It was covered in crud of some nature. What was it? Yeah, it had a hole in the collar. It had a stain there. Still sold. Ferrari branded, Porsche branded, big boy toy cars type brands are good sellers. I have this saw that I repeat about John Barbados, which is it's an uneven brand. Certain things within John Barbados are perennially good sellers. Others are typically pretty anemic sellers. For example, button up shirts have way uneven sell through. I typically avoid them unless I can get them at the bins. Henley shirts, one of those items in John Barbados that I pick up almost unconditionally. I would say Henleys and vests for some reason are my two strongest selling categories of John Barbados. I seem to remember from the manifesto that the jeans are good sellers as well and the suits can sell for a lot of 
money, there is a breakdown in the manifesto. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's 330 men's clothing brands broken down in detail by sell through and it's available for free or pay me what you want. And there's a link to that in the description of the video. God bless the bins. You can find stuff like this. It's a linen blend pair of Banana Republic slacks. Banana Republic is a brand that is ass. However, 100% linen and Banana Republic is going to be probably a pretty safe bet as the weather warms up. These linen blends, if you can get them for really cheap, probably decent flippers. Linen, 100% linen within ass brands will carry them over the line of desirability where they will be worth enough margin, at least for me, that they'll be worth picking up. Even though it's like Tommy Hilfiger or Banana Republic or J. Crew or something. Got these at the bins. Couldn't believe it. Can't believe somebody didn't pick them up just because they were in je uh, jeans in good condition. Those usually don't last that long at the bins. It's Page and it's a higher end subline of Page PPD. I've not found this before. Page, uh, I think it's a pretty okay brand for women. And these ended up being men's jeans, which I didn't know that they even made. So just threw them in with the other stuff that I was buying based on the fact that they were a known brand jeans in decent condition and they flip for 30 bucks. Iron Co. Not something I would pick up outside of the bins, but I did get them at the bins because I'm a naughty boy and uh, they flip for 22 bucks. These CDs cost me 50 cents each. I was going to review them on Book Pills, my book channel. I used to do this series where I would listen to like a hundred thrift store CDs and rank them. And it took hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to make them. And then nobody cared, nobody watched the videos. So I stopped doing the series. So anyway, long story short, I got them for 50 cents each and put them in a lot and flipped them for 35, which is pretty decent margins, especially considering these go out media mail. Same exact story. I listened to this one and it didn't quite catch me and I put them all in a lot, flipped them for 50 bucks. Another bins flip, 22 and a half bucks. That was 10% off 25 free people. Got it for next to nothing, who cares? Might've been able to get 30 out of it. I do not care. Another ancient item. I don't know why I didn't just price these down and move them. I think because I had so much sunk cost in terms of the time that it takes to clean and list shoes. I said on a previous video, I just don't enjoy doing shoes anymore. So I kept the price up probably higher than I should have. The demand for these wasn't all that great, but they did finally sell after about two years for 75 bucks. Should have just priced them at 50 and gotten them out of my apartment. Couldn't believe this one. I, this sold within like 24 hours after listing it. I expected this to be in my store for at least two months. I got it at a swap meet for basically no money, maybe a dollar, maybe. Style & Co is just a dismal brand. Just awful, awful but it flipped right away. I don't know why. Good bolo for the bins. Just a cheap little nothing pair of leggings from Victoria's Secret. Pink is one of the lower end lines in Victoria's Secret, but these athletic leggings seem to have some good demand. Women's clothing, not my wheelhouse. I just pick it up at the bins because why not? The majority of the clothing that you find at the bins is women's clothing. Uh, I, I don't know what the proportion is, but definitely there just is more women's clothing in the world than men's clothing. I predicted in a former video that this was gonna sell on Poshmark. It sold on eBay and it sold for full asking price, 18 bucks. Camo is just strong. It's a strong keyword. Like linen, it can often overcome undesirability on a brand level, which I don't think Torrid really satisfies. I think Torrid is a fairly good brand. It's a little bit on the cheap end, I think. Again, women's clothing, not my wheelhouse but this cost next to no money at a flea market, so I picked it up just because it was camo and because the scuttlebutt on, on these mean streets says that Torrid is a great brand for Poshmark. I think Mick told me that, my friend Mick. I'm just skipping ahead here, so this video isn't an hour long. These did sell. These offset the cost partially, or for the most part, of that box of lures that I got. And two of these were Lazy Ikes. One of them, the blue one in the middle was a flatfish. The top one was a jitterbug. These sold really quick for 10 bucks, 80 cents. I am pleased with it. I didn't think they would sell quite that quickly, but fishing lures are just such a healthy category. Fishing gear in general, very healthy category. And I got a bunch of lures out of this for basically free. Got this at a garage sale. It took me a while to list it, finally did. It sold a couple weeks later for 55 bucks. It's a jumpsuit or romper. Somebody corrected me in the comments. 
that I, I misapplied romper. I guess rompers are shorts, am I remembering that correctly? Uh, and the long panted ones, the long, the long panted, the long legged pants, jumpers, rompers are jumpsuits. This flip for 17 went out media mail. Thought it would be worth more than this, but it wasn't. And I think this was part of a book haul that I got for myself. So this probably covered the cost of whatever it was that I bought. All right, I am skipping over a lot here, but I wanted to point these out. This is a collaboration between Dark Seas and Grundens. Dark Seas is kind of a pseudo streetwear brand, I think. I, s I find their t-shirts sometimes. I don't think the sell-through is that strong. I've looked it up a bunch of times, but Grundens, which is this logo right here, is really desirable. That's a fishing brand. They do a lot of bib overalls. They do a lot of rain gear and the t-shirts I think are good sellers too. This is a brand that I don't find all that often, but when I do, I always pick it up and flip it. Pelagic is another good fishing brand. Sims, Huck, these are all in the manifesto. Fishing brands are a great, great, great niche to flip. In fact, I should do a tier video. I don't think anybody would really watch it, but I, I should do that because it's just such a strong niche. Don't remember where I sourced this, but I do remember that I just picked it up on a hunch because of what it was. See all the, the mesh weird designs on the back? And it looks really technical. It looks like it has a bunch of adjectives on the tags. Uh, flight tech, weave, whatever nonsense, um, marketing language. Those kinds of shirts can do really well. And I found all the proper keywords by looking up that style code right there, which you can do with Nike clothing. A lot of people that know that you can do this with shoes don't know that you can do it with clothing. The CZ90, you get the picture. We have run out of space, as always happens on these videos for the screen recording there. So that is the end. I hope that this helped you and I hope that you got something out of it and I hope that uh, you learned something and I hope that you carry these wisdoms and life lessons with you into your life.